In our previous video we dealt with Schießen, an important technical item which lacks an explicit description in the Nuremberg Codex. Through a methodical analysis of the text of the source combined with practical experimentation we were able to reconstruct the most plausible modern pattern for this movement. This time I wanted to investigate two terms undoubtedly of crucial importance for the author of the Codex, since they appear very often across the text and have their own dedicated chapters, I mean Hengen and Winden. However, the fact that they are explicitly described and considered important did not make the analysis any easier, quite the contrary. Their technical descriptions proved uh, rather vague, while their ubiquity meant they are tightly intertwined with other concepts which, yes, you're right, also had to be included in the analysis, thus making it grow like a rolling snowball and driving me mad with the seemingly never-ending circle of cross-referencing. However, against all odds, I managed to complete the analysis. You may read it in the companion article on my blog, the link is in the description below. The article also delves into more detail on the rationale for the reconstructions of motions presented in the video. However, the vid alone summarizes the results pretty well, so you may opt uh, for just watching in case you are not fond of reading textuals of linguistic, logical and historical ponderings. Whichever way you choose, enjoy! The most logical way to present the Hengen and Winden is to start with the Vorhauen, that is strikes. This is because we are directly informed in the Codex that the Winden originate from Hengen, which in turn come from Versetzen, which, as you probably start to expect, derive from the Hauen. There are four basic strikes according to the Codex, two upper, left and right, called Oberhauen, and two lower, also left and right, called Unterhauen. They form the foundation for different specialized variants, most famous of which are the five strikes, also known as secret or master strikes. However, it is important to note that the Oberhauen and Unterhauen are not precisely defined motor patterns, but rather broad categories grouping motions sharing some features, but otherwise very distinct. It should be enough to say that both Zornhau and Krumhau are considered Oberhauen. Therefore, there is much liberty in shaping a particular execution of either of the strikes, for example whether to use the long or the short edge in the Unterhauen. However, one thing seems clear. The strikes lead straight to the point. In my opinion, see the article for more, it means that they have to be concluded in a way that sets the stage for an immediate and direct thrust, should an opening be spotted. This has certain implications for the motor reconstruction of the fencing techniques from the Codex. The accompanying article follows the logic of the text strictly and proceeds from the strikes to Verzetten, that is displacement. But here, in the video, we will first present the gross motor patterns for Hengen, that is hangings, and Winden, which is windings, which emerge from our analysis and then go through a review of some applications, especially different forms of displacements. Let's start with Hengen, since according to the Codex they precede Winden, or in other words, before you use Winden you have to arrive in Hengen. Hengen, or hangings, are described as positions, that is, static techniques to which one comes and from which one proceeds further, especially when the swords are crossed. They, are, uh, they also have to fulfill a set of additional conditions. Protect an opening, be shortened as compared to Schießen, which means they are held with the sword rather close to the body, offer a direct avenue for uh, attack from the bind, and turn the forward edge against the opponent's weapon. Note that since Vom Tag is considered a hanging in the Codex, the list of characteristic features of Hengen does not include aiming the point at the opponent, contrary to a common belief. This also affects the other hangings, in which not aiming the point directly at the target provides better protection and more solid structure. In result, not all guards can be considered hangings, as indicated in the presented review of the four canonical guards of the Lichtenauerian tradition. The Codex is also famous uh, for allegedly mistaking the guard of the fool and the guard of the plough, which has some consequences for interpretation of the Tverhauen. For more, please see the article. As shown, the point is moved to its final position, that is aimed at the opponent, uh, during a transition from Hengen to Winden. According to the Codex, this is done through the use of Wenden, or the turning, a fine movement in which one turns their forward edge towards their opponent's weapon. This move, which may be wide, but usually should be rather tight, has to be supported with solid grip and whole body effort. Applied correctly, it provides reliable protection from a direct attack from the bind and opens up a possibility for one's own offensive. 
In some cases, following this principle strictly turns out to be difficult. However, Tverhau, which is compared to or perhaps even a part of wind, uses the back edge instead, which suggests that the principle of turning the forward edge may have not been universally applicable. Maybe it was limited to these cases, where Winden was performed towards the opponent's sword, like in later Joachim Meyer's in Winden, and not away from or around it, like in Meyer's aus Winden. Nevertheless, note that the transition to Winden may, but does not have to result in a hit. As a matter of fact, in the majority of examples given in the Nuremberg Codex, the immediate result of Winden is placing the point of the sword about half an L, or roughly between 30 or 40 centimeters, away from the opponent's face or chest. Hence, the preferred distance for Winden requires one to either extend fully into Schiessen or, which is often much safer, with footwork to actually land the thrust. In case the distance turns out to be shorter, due to a mistake or an unexpected advance of the opponent, strikes or cuts should be used instead, which combine into the three plays or three methods of wounding mentioned in the codex. This is well in line with the observation from the previous Schiessen video analysis that the Nuremberg Codex seems to advocate separating the aiming of the point, or more generally, offensive hand movements, from the footwork. This way, with footwork happening only after the movement of the hands, one retains an option to change decision, for instance, by switching to a different hanging or aborting the planned attack whatsoever. Let us illustrate the application of the discussed principles in Versetzen, or displacements, of which there are three types in the Nuremberg Codex. Offensive, aimed to hit or force the opponent to leave a guard and parry. Defensive, used to parry an incoming attack. And preparatory, in which one strikes at the sword of the other in order to prepare the actual attack. In all the three cases, Versetzen usually leads uh, to Hangen, from which Winden follows. Note that Preceding Winden with Hengen ensures greater safety than proceeding to Winden directly from Fersetzen. What is also important is that Hengen cannot play its intended role as a prelude for Winden if the opponent strikes or pushes to the side, that is away from the center line and one's body. In such case, there is no place for Versetzen and crossing the swords, and one should use Durchwechseln, that is disengagement, instead. Note that the preparatory displacement is not a simple act of crossing the swords, called Unbinded in the Codex, but a strike, that is a somewhat violent movement. This probably explains why the Codex advises to use Schiessen and Durchwechseln against Anwinden, but to withdraw, abziehen, from a displacement. The latter simply strikes the Schiessen away and precludes Durchwechseln. Let us emphasize that Hengen and Winden are applicable only when the opponent is determined to remain on the sword. However, the opponent may also want to leave the bind, which is referred to as Epzien. In such a situation, Schiessen, or more generally pressing forward with the point called Nachvolgen in the Codex, would be the most direct way to get rid of the opponent. Note, however, that while Epzien is generally considered to present a good opportunity for attack to one's opponent, which means it is discouraged in the Codex, it is also described as a crucial move in countering the proper Versetzen. Reportedly, FCN, fluidly combined with a strike, defeats displacements. 
which would mean that it has to defeat not only the displacement itself, but also its follow-up attack, that is, Nachfolgen. Practice shows that this cannot be reliably achieved without C and performed without footwork. However, combining it with some kind of retreat, backwards or sideways, creates enough distance to avoid the thrust and strike the opponent or at least scare him off. Dobra, mamy to. O, o.